This is Joanna Thornhill. She is a stylist and an author. We've got a wonderful book out at the moment um, called The New Mindful Home. And to everybody that's just joined us, um, today we're going to do a live Q&A discussing um, all things mindful home and um, creating an authentic home. And um, lots of you have already sent in your questions. Um, so we're going to go through those in a bit. So first of all, Joanna, do you want to introduce yourself? Tell us a bit more about you. Um, so I'll take it over to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So hello, everybody. Um, yeah. So um, I am a, um, a commercial interior stylist, uh, writer and author. And I also help brands with um, sort of coaching and consulting in, in terms of their interior um, in interiors, um, visual identity and that that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, I've, I've been sort of working in this world for about 15 or so years now. I've, I've worked for magazines, um, doing sort of freelance uh, jobs for them and, and a bit of in-house stuff, uh, as well as helping um, sort of with their lookbook shoots um, and yeah, doing editorial photo shoots. And my phone keeps going dark, so I keep poking the screen. <laughs> um, and yes, and, and I've written written three three books um, and, and my most recent one, is um i've put it under this pile to keep my phone up so i'll grab another one <laughs> um yeah so my latest book is um called the new mindful home and how to make it yours um and that came out in um april of this year um and yeah i'm sure i'm sure we'll sort of talk a lot more about that but that's yeah that's just kind of basically who i am <laughs> okay brilliant so if you've just joined us um just to let you guys know this is joanna thornhill and today we're doing a live Q&A and discussing all things the mindful home and how to make it more authentic and sustainable. And um, so how did you come up with the concept of the book? Um, it was something that's been um, sort of rattling around in my brain for a while. I, I think um, probably in the last sort of three or four years, I started to feel a bit like I was more interested in finding out a little bit more about wellness in general and how we can um, you know the different um, elements of neuroscience that go on behind in, in our brains that influence why we might sort of think and feel certain ways and how we can how we can adapt and improve that in in ourselves in terms of sort of if you're feeling anxious or uh, stressed all, all the things that we all suffer with from from time to time and then I started from there wondering um, how that could how our homes could play a role in all of that and, and the impact of our living environment, um, both for good or bad in terms of our kind of stress levels and our feeling of comfort and safety and that sort of thing. And this was like pre pre pandemic when obviously, um, you know, it became a lot more prevalent in our thoughts. Um, yeah. And so kind of from there, I started just sort of researching all, all these kind of more holistic uh, way, ways of being um, and starting to make the links between how that fitted in with our, our homes. And I felt like there wasn't very much out there at the time. Um, there's a few more books and things that have come out now, but I couldn't really find any sort of comprehensive books or, or kind of any, any really meaty um, sites or websites or anything that, that sort of discussed the breadth of this topic, really. So, um, yeah, I thought, <laughs> I thought I'd write one myself. Um, so yeah, that's kind of essentially how it how it came about. Just this sort of growing interest in in sort of holistic, um, authentic design, really, and and also just feeling like often in interiors we're talking about talking about um, sort of trends and and what what the latest things are without necessarily thinking about how that how that can impact um, yeah on our kind of moods and our and how it how that might suit our personalities as well. So yeah, there was kind of a lot, quite a lot to it, and and then the book got commissioned in um, to autumn of twenty nineteen, and I literally finished writing it about sort of the week before we went into lockdown. So, so um, yeah, yeah it's interesting. Actually, like one of the a really great book for obviously what's going on at the moment. Uh, I think lots of people would be really interested in it. Um, like you say, there has been a lot of stress and like anxiety about different things. And what I did really like about the book is that you had the DIY um, at the end of each chapter. So something that you could do that was sort of calming and would really sort of um, obviously to put in your home. Um, so I think that was really, really great. Um, was there anything else you want to add about the book or do you want to move on to the Q&A? Um, yeah, well, I suppose that, yeah, it, it, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad that you enjoyed um, that element of the book. And yeah, I suppose just to just to say that, yeah, so I've, so I've put all of this information together in the in the book about all the various different elements of 
designing you know creating a home that is that feels mindful of essentially meaning to feel authentic and, and happy within yourself at home but I think a really important part of that for me was making it very practical rather than it's not just kind of theories and and ideas it's explaining what what might be going on in in your subconscious behind the scenes um that's making you feel a certain way towards interiors uh, you know towards different colors or fabrics or, or textures or anything like that and just kind of explaining that but then giving some really practical advice as to how you can navigate that and and how you can use that to decorate your homes in you know in a, in a realistic way and so I have brought in various yeah, um, practical things that you can follow and and these pages that that do sort of explain things a bit more so it's yeah it's it's kind of it's yeah it's, it's lots of short sharp bursts of information but it's really actionable tips as well so yeah, that, yeah, that's definitely great. I just wanted to quickly say that if you guys um, watching have got any questions, um, just pop them in and we'll answer those at the end. Um, so now, brilliant, we're going to move on to the Q&A. Um, so we've asked our followers to send in some questions um, and now Joanna's going to answer them live. Um, so the first one is from Emily. Um, can you talk us through the journey and how did you develop your approach for interiors? I think it's something, I'm just going to turn this phone up slightly, it's a bit quiet. Um, I think um, my approach to yeah my my approach to sort of interiors um, is something that's definitely evolved over the years and and I, as I said in the last few sort of three or four years I've been taking this increasingly taking this slightly different approach and trying to think more about how the starting point of how you want your home to make you feel rather than how you want it to look at as as the kind of beginning point of, of that really so um uh could you run me through the question again I think I've just gone off track on my brain <laughs> <laughs> so it's can you talk us through your journey and how did you develop your approachable interiors yeah yeah so I've got yeah so I think that does kind, kind of um answer that really but yeah I, I think certainly working because I work more as a kind of in the commercial um area creating photos for shoots and things like that rather than um necessarily designing homes for real people so in in that sense it's always been very much focused on on creating these these trends and and kind of having this awareness seeing what's going on um you know at the trade shows and, and press press shows and and things like that as well and i also do trend report writing for a wgsn forecasting agency so i'm always kind of looking at lots of different sources um from what's going on on instagram to yeah to what you design are up to um and then kind of pulling all that together and, and sort of defining what i see as the kind of ongoing uh, ongoing trends um but i think yes yeah, so as i say in the last few years it, it's been i've been more become more interested and more aware of the kind of bigger picture so less about kind of passing i guess fads and more about the kind of more long term um sort of lifestyle lifestyle trends and the, the way we're we're kind of shifting into more kind of long term ways of being so so for example things like um people talk a lot about biophilia at the moment as as a trend but i think that is the idea of, which is the idea of bringing in nature into your home um and and replacing that connection with the natural world that we are often out of kilter with um and so you could you know that could be classed as a as a trend but i see it more as a kind of an evolutionary kind of you know way i, I don't think it will ever not be a trend i think it's something that we've become more aware of the importance of that connection and it's now just a question of the different designs and ways you can influence you know bring that influence into your home rather than it being a kind of a passing trend if that's i think that sort of answers the question definitely does <laughs> so the next question is from Catherine, and she asks what do you think is important to be more oh sorry why do you think it's important to be more mindful in a modern home that's a really good question yeah it is a very good question um I wrote a whole book on the topic <laughs> but um <laughs> essentially I think um there's yeah I, I I kind of I suppose I would frame it as it's really important for us as individuals to take a mindful approach to our home because by by doing so it it can have so many it, it can have so many benefits to every aspect of our life not just not just our home life although obviously that you know we've lived a lot at home in the last sort of 16 months or so but you know now we are able to get out and about a bit more um so essentially by by taking this more mindful approach to your 
um, to sort of your home design and and in also when you're sort of br- looking to bring things into your home, it it can help you in the same way that meditation can help you. Um, if you do sort of a mindful meditation, you can feel it helps you to um, sort of feel calm and grounded and connected to yourself and, and in tune with sort of your your gut and your head and your heart and all, all the sort of emotions rather than just be stuck in head-based thinking. So if you take the same approach to your home as well, then it will give you that more kind of connected, holistic, um, you know, feeling of being more contented because you are taking into account you know all, all the aspects of of what's going on, and not just purely purely choosing things because you like the look or the color. You're it, it's a more kind of informed approach, really. Um, and then in in that as well, I think another really important factor is to be aware of and be mindful of the impact of the choices we make in terms of the environment. Um, you know, sort of sustainability, um, all, all that side of things as well. Um, supporting you know new designer makers and things too. Um, So it's kind of taking this kind of quite broad approach to just bringing that awareness and and mindful thought into essentially all of the things that we, you know, bring into our homes and and what the impact of them is. Yeah, brilliant. That's a great answer. Thank you for that. So Catherine, if you're listening, um, there we go. So the next question is from Holly. Um, In your book, it mentions a major study by, sorry, in 2019, a major study by Happiness Institute revealed feeling happy in our home counts for 50% of our overall happiness in life, which are three times more important than our income. Why do you think this is? I think, again, it's um, it's that sometimes, sometimes we can get a bit, um, sometimes we can overlook the importance and the, and the, the impact our homes are actually playing on our on our subconscious and I think a lot of the times we would I I put that quote in because I thought it was really interesting because I I would have thought that people would have ranked income more highly and I imagine a lot of other people would be quite surprised by that statistic that actually that's um feeling happy at home is actually three times more important um to us than than having a a, you know a good income and also I've um yeah and I've seen other articles as well about apparently when you reach a certain threshold of income your happiness doesn't actually go up and and it's not actually that high it's not like oh when you're a millionaire it's kind of like you know when you're earning a reasonable income that you can get by and have a holiday once a year not kind of necessarily being super wealthy or anything like that um and I yeah I think it is just very easy to um dismiss or not really think about the impact that our homes can have on us and there's there's so much that goes on um yeah sort of subconsciously that we're not aware of thing, things that might be kind of jarring to us or I call them all the, all the sort of micro stresses so if there's kind of loads of little things it might it might be that you're generally happy with your home but there's just loads of little things here and there that are bugging you on a daily basis even things like sort of clutter and and that kind of stuff as well not necessarily your actual decor um and I think that by kind of by just taking again that sort of mindful moment and taking that time to sort of think actually is there something I can do about and it doesn't necessarily mean spending you know going out and buying new things it's just kind of looking at the home and thinking what can I do that's going to essentially alleviate some of my stresses um and you know and and then by doing that by bringing down this you know the the more we can bring down our stress levels at home and have our home be somewhere that helps us feel grounded and calm and happy um the more that's going to impact on our lives you know outside of the home as well so it's kind of so it's so interconnected and you know never more so than in the last year or so when we've been at home so much and I think going forward people are still it does seem like a lot of people are now in situations where they're going to be working from home flexibly like maybe a couple of days a week or whatever so I think as much as we're not going to be stuck at home as, as we have been um the home is still going to have this importance to us yeah definitely so the next question is from Lucy now that more of us are working from home and what are your top tips for making an office space more relaxing yeah so um yeah that's that's something that has been coming up quite a lot um unsurprisingly (laughs) in, Mm -hmm. in the last few years um so yeah so I think it it depends on your setup but I I think what whatever the situation whatever your kind of home working situation there are always things that you can do to to help make things better even if you are kind of literally hot desking at the dining table and having to sort of clear off your um, laptop at, at the end of the night um but so I think um 
you know, whatever whatever the circumstance, I think firstly to not get too caught up in thinking, oh, I need to buy you know, office things. I need an, a, a plastic office pen pot and um, an ugly plastic monitor riser. Uh, um, uh, you know, the, you know, the concession would be if you are, if you are working from home full time, you, it's probably worth getting a, like a decent office chair rather than sort of making do with a dining chair or something. But if you're, you know, maybe it's again, only sort of hot desking once, twice a week at home, then you probably could just get away with kind of a nice dining chair or that sort of thing. Um, so I, to, I always like to approach that with just trying to make the home office or your home working setup corner, wherever it is, um, as homely as possible, really. So bringing in items that are more household items so again in terms of things like pen pots you know maybe you could use like an old vintage tin or like um you know sort of a little wicker basket or something like that um you using um you know maybe using like a nice sort of sideboard or console table or an old vintage bureau or something to to work as your desk rather than again a fancy like an office office desk um and just thinking about you know maybe it's something you could kind of paint or upcycle or, or whatever to make it feel a bit more um homely just trying to sort of blend in the space and bringing in think bringing in items to your workspace that are going to make you feel happy um whether that's maybe like i've got a few sort of little crystals and things that i keep under my monitor um that's just a kind of a nice little mindful thing um obviously plants around the desk um and then in terms of so if you are if you are hot desking around the place thinking about setting up some kind of like a tray or a storage box or something that again is kind of blending in with the household rather than a kind of a you know an, an office um you know the sort of office stationary boxes you know it could be like a nice wicker storage box or something so having somewhere where you you know that's your designated I'm going to offload my work I'm done work for the day I'm going to offload these things into this box so not only is that tidying things away it's also mentally helping you shift out of I'm leaving work mode and now I'm at home which can be so helpful when if if those things are all happening like literally in the same um environment then just kind of having that mental differentiation and and again in the morning then sort of you know taking the things out that can be the kind of that can cue your brain into okay I'm going into work mode now so it just it just can be quite helpful um and then I've kind of got loads to say on this but I'll give <laughs> one more <laughs> one more kind of idea is also to if you are if you are sort of um if you are kind of hot desking in a if you've got say a corner of the room that you've set up a home office in but it's you know a room that maybe it's your like your space or a corner of the kitchen or even your bedroom or something um just having a bit of a think about ways that you can visually separate out that space from the rest of the um from the rest of the room um whether that's something like bringing in a folding screen like a sort of a dressing I can't think what it's called like a you know like a sort of a dressing screen um maybe a nice fabric one or something so again so it doesn't feel like an office partition um but just something like that to just kind of zone it off if it is kind of in the midst of of the other you know another working space or even just using things like bringing in a few tall plants or something just to kind of create something where it feels like you're a little bit separated away from everything else that's going on and also to kind of visually if you've say got a desktop computer that is sort of fixed in place just to again just have that help it sort of blend away into the background a little bit so it's not like I'm sitting trying to relax but I'm looking at my computer Brilliant. So, um, Lucy, if you're listening, um, that was some really good tips there um, for making your office space more relaxing. So, the next question is from Gemma. Um, how do you change the energy in a room? I work from home and I feel like my home is feeling more like the workplace and there's no separation. So, you have sort of briefly got over that already. Uh, is there anything mm. else you'd like to add? Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, so, so I think, yeah, that, um, the, the whole idea of yeah, um, being able to sort of pack, pack away and repack um, your desk at the start of each day and just trying to um, make it a bit more of a almost like a ritual. So there's, a, a, there's a technique that I mentioned in the book called um, nolling, K-N-O-N-N. Double L I N G, I think. Um, and apparently it was something that was um the Parker Knoll fact furniture factory used to have someone that would go around to everyone's work desks at the end of the day and literally kind of set up, sort of 
align all of the items on their desk um, so that everything was kind of neat and tidy. So if you think of like the kind of, you know, the Instagram flat lays where ev everything is all sort of laid out really nicely. The idea was that the workers would come in in the, in the morning and everything was set out in a way that's really kind of not really organized and visually appealing. And, you know, psychologically, it helped them just to feel, you know, a bit happy about the fact that they're, <laughs> they're back at work. Um, so so things like that that can be another nice thing to try um you know I've, talk, I've talked quite a lot about the the um you know the things like the screens and plants and, and stuff but then other things can just be again to literally um you know outside of the interiors just to maybe take I know a lot of people take a walk around the block at the start of the day and then at the end of the day just to so you mentally feel like you have cut, you've you've left and and come back um I'm quite lucky with I'm in um I've got a little garden office cabin <laughs> that I'm in so for me that's helped that's really helped we only set this up in 2019 like again I'm so glad we did this before the um, pandemic but so for me it's just that it means that you know it's just those even though I'm like literally five meters from the kitchen just kind of coming somewhere else just has such a it, it really helps to sort of mentally feel like I'm going to work, I'm coming back from work. And it also means I'm less likely to just kind of casually carry on working like into the night because I don't want to come back out here once I've you know locked it up for the day. So um yeah, yeah. So anything that you can do to kind of create that. So again, I think just having kind of taking a walk or something like that can sort of essentially elicit the same sort of thing. Okay, brilliant. So the next question is from Katie. Um, how do you create a friendly home environment on a budget? Mm. so some of the things I um talk about in the book reg in regards to creating a friendlier space isn't necessarily to do with um you know buying buying new things but um certain things to that, that can help a space feel kind of a bit more cozy and welcoming in and again it, it relates to what's going on in our subconscious so basically our our brains don't really like right angles because there's no right there's no kind of sharp edges naturally in in nature so it's when you're when you are kind of buying things just thinking about is is this quite a kind of a harsh hard object so mm -hmm. for example buying a table um looking at designs that have slightly rounded corners or maybe an oval shape or something something like that especially if it's something that you're sort of walking straight into when you come into a room because it can it can sort of subconsciously make you feel a bit on edge even though you're not aware of it it's all these kind of little stresses again um and it also can just be to do with um um thinking about furniture placement so again not not wanting to put trying to avoid putting any furniture like a sofa or something in the center of a room where your back is to um the, lots of space behind you as as, as 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 creatures we can feel a lot more kind of cozy and protected if our back is kind of facing near to a wall so rather than being be, being out in the middle of the room because it's that kind of caveman thing again of we're sort of scanning for dangers and if there's if you're just in sort of one big open space you can feel again subconsciously not necessarily something you're aware of but you can feel a bit more vulnerable um so just thinking about you know if if you're wanting to make your home feel a bit cosy without spending any money at all it, it could literally be looking at your placement of, of where things are and just thinking about you know could you re rearrange things so you have a bit more of a, a sort of a cosy nook that you can go to um you know that that sort of thing as, as well and um yeah and, and sort of texture texture is also a big part of feeling cosy in the home so uh, I think often with design we think about the visuals but we're not thinking about all the other senses and so it can be really calming in the same way you imagine like a, a child has their sort of favorite blanket and when they're feeling distressed um you know we the same the same thing still goes through our brains that um that feelings kind of you know certain textures if there's something like say a boot clay or velvet or something that's got a really nice sort of surface um just having those kind of things around you can just be quite calming if you're well, either if you are stressed or or just you know regardless <laughs> so yeah quite comforting to have something mm. sort of soft and cozy so the next question is from ellie and um, how do you bring calm to a chaotic family home yes um so i think yeah i think a really useful thing to think about there is is um storage um storage solves solves a multitude of of sins um 
you know, if, they, if you've got lots of kind of kids stuff around and just um, thinking about ways you can essentially blend things that are a bit jarring perhaps in the home um, to sort of blend blend them in, almost kind of hide them in plain sight. So, for example, if you've got, um, you know, in, in the kitchen, if you've got loads of kind of loads of kids par- uh, kind of food packaging and all that sort of thing out that might be a bit visually jarring because often the colours are bright and bombarding uh, because they're designed to attract our attention and you might not want them to at home so thinking about ways you could potentially decant some things down and just putting them into nice storage jars or you know I I sometimes use like vintage cake tins for for food storage and things like that as well Um, that can be particularly good if you've got sort of open shelves or anything like that Um, and again in in kind of main living spaces and and in kids rooms as well um, maybe rather than rather than sort of traditional children's storage um there's no reason why you can't also look at um you know kind of more 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 um sympathetic should we say like adult um furniture that you can store things away you know maybe again that kind of a nice a nice vintage sideboard or something that you can tuck away all their kind of all the smaller bits and bobs um so again so it's kind of just trying to blend as much as possible blend those things into the into the home without it kind of being this very jarring you know you've got this lovely home scheme but then there's just this sort of plastic monstrosity in in the corner um so just thinking about ways you can yeah just incorporate that into your home design okay brilliant uh so the next question is from julie um what is an easy swap for being more sustainable on a budget in the home um so i think I suppose really the first um, sort of the, the, the start would just be to, again, take just try to take a bit of a mindful moment before you're purchasing anything and just think, is this, you know, is, is this definitely something that I want, need or like really, really desire to have it? Um, and then just thinking about, about, you know, is is this the best, you know, is this the best that I can do in the sense of, you know, it's it can it can end up being more, co- sometimes it, the, the easiest route is just to kind of buy a cheap, you know, the, the cheap item from, from the supermarket or, or something like that. Um, and, and it's just having that thought before, before you go down that road and, and um, just to think to yourself, you know, it is, is there a better way? Um, and, and what the trade-offs are in terms of if, if something, you know, it's, it's hard to find something that kind of ticks, all of the eco boxes so it can be quite a personal thing so for example if you're um you know if you're a vegan it might be really important to you to try and find um you know um obviously non non animal derived furnishings but then you've got the the toss up between sometimes that can mean items which are made from um sort of plastic based materials rather than which aren't eco in themselves so sometimes it's like what what's the most important thing for me in that scenario um and then just on on kind of a slightly other angle of it is just just trying to be aware of what's going on in your local area in terms of um sort of second hand like in in my area we have um a jumble trail we've had that for a few years which is like you know like a jumble sale but people put things out in their house at, at the front and it's all really cheap and it's a really lovely way to engage mm-hmm. with the community so so it's kind of just looking out for things like that in your area um any like artists open studios often often you can find um you know places that there there will be people that are selling kind of slight seconds and things so that can be a really nice way to not only get um you know some sort of homemade one-off hope bits and bobs for your home but you, you can still get them for a really good price and then you're also kind of meeting with the designer and learning a bit more about it so it will have more of a sort of resonance to you as well so that's I, I, yeah I'm a big fan of that <laughs> yeah I definitely feel that um, this year like myself I've I used to sort of be a shopaholic this year I've definitely picked up something and been like do I need it no don't buy it like mm. definitely trying to be more better at shopping <laughs> yeah exactly so, um, moving on to another question um how can I keep my home updated and fresh without following the fast fashion trends yeah so I think um it's yeah, I mean, I, I kind of, I really like um, homes that just sort of kind of naturally evolve over over time. And I think by by getting to know, I, in, in the book, I mentioned a few things like, um, 
to do with um, what's called trait psychology, which is learning about um, a method where you can learn about your personality types. Um, so there, there are ways, there are tests you can do online for this. Um, if you Google the ocean model, um, that can be a really good way to find out a bit, a bit more about that. And it's essentially getting to know in yourself what your kind of, yeah, what your sort of different traits are. And also things, it relates to things like whether you're an introvert or an extrovert and thinking about how that can influence your your kind of design choices as well so I think essentially when you when you get to know yourself a little more in that way it might sound a bit kind of <laughs> a, a bit of a weird thing to conceptualize but um but by using these kind of tools to get to get to have a bit of a better understanding of your of your kind of personality you can then link that through to uh, through to your sort of design style and then use that essentially as a, a kind of a blueprint for um going forward that you you can then sort of more easily ascertain what it is that you genuinely like versus what, what you're just seeing on Pinterest or Instagram or whatever. And it's so easy to have our heads turned by all that, look at that lovely house on Instagram. But um, just because it looks lovely on Instagram, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to resonate well with us. So I think just taking that, doing that little bit of homework, essentially, to figure out the best personal way for you will just help to yeah eliminate it will help to sort of minimize the likelihood of of making any mistakes and and I say mistakes in the sense of doing something that you then don't quite feel quite happy with so often we yeah that feeling of if you've decorated and and you're just like it's just not quite right for me but I don't know why because I like this color and but it just doesn't feel right so yeah but by doing that first you can essentially learn what is learn what is going to be better suited um, to you and then it's just a question of you know up, updating things as and when and again just taking that mindful approach so you know if, if you do want to sort of freshen things up thinking well you know can, is, can I sell on, or you know can I give away um, you know some of the existing things I have to make space for, for new ones and then with the new things thinking do they have to be brand new um, or can I buy them secondhand as well can I keep up a lookout on you know local Facebook marketplace and, and that sort of thing rather than necessarily kind of going straight to the uh, straight to the shops and then obviously there's things like fabric um which obviously you guys sell <laughs> um that can be a really good way to you know update even existing pieces maybe, maybe you don't need to go out and buy a new armchair maybe you could get your current one reupholstered in a new, a new fabric and it will feel like a brand new item without actually purchasing anything new other than obviously the fabric yeah we've definitely seen a surge of people sewing at home upholstering and just like freshen up the home really with stuff that they already have. Um, so mm. that has been really, really popular over the last couple of months. And um, so that concludes the questions that we had sent in. I think there was a few that came through. Let's have a look. So at Kazi Wonder asked, where can we buy the book? Where can we get your book? Oh, well, <laughs> um, so yeah, so it's available. Yeah, so the new Mindful Home um is um it's published by lawrence king um so yeah there's there's quite a few places you can um you can get it, it it's on um amazon and it should be in um most kind of waterstones and and the usual sort of bookshops um i do also sell copies directly on my website um which i sign yeah i can i can do signed copies if they come directly from me otherwise everywhere else it's just coming from like a supply center but i've got like I've got a little box here, so um, I yeah have them to hand if anyone wants wants to buy a signed copy directly. Okay, brilliant. And then the last question was at Karad Ford three, um, how to give stuff away? I'm a hoarder. Um, what is your suggestions for that? Yeah, I mean, I I'm quite a <laughs> I can have slight hoarding tendency. You probably see quite a lot in the background. Um, I think, yeah, it, it's something I talk about in in the book as well. Um, and essentially, I think it's it's yet again taking that taking that mindful approach to things and and just trying to trying to question, you know, do I genuinely really want this piece? Does does it make me happy? Am I keeping it because I feel obliged to? Maybe it was a gift from someone or you know a hand me down from from a relative um and you kind of you feel obliged to keep it forever because you know because they gave it to you um so it's just taking out taking that um 
taking that moment to check in. I mean, not to kind of go to Marie Kondo on it, but you know, <laughs> does it spark joy? <laughs> um, but what I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't sort of fully. I, 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 there's lots of things that she does that I, I do like, but I'm not kind of like a full do that. Um, but I, I do like the fact that she does. You know, it, it's essentially what she's doing is kind of getting you to interact with the item as well. So I think it, it can be easier when you're sort of physically. I'm not getting rid of this, but like um, <laughs> if you're sort of physically looking at something and engaging with it and thinking, you know, do you do, do I really need you? Do you make me happy? <laughs> and, and sometimes just thinking, you know, would I buy this? Oh, sorry. Went for a second. Um, yeah. Thinking, you know, would, would I buy this today? in the shops today would i would i spend 20 pounds on this you know whatever whatever it is if, if it's something that cost 20 pounds when you bought it um and if the answer is no i wouldn't buy it then it's kind of like well you know would is, is it really worth keeping um and then you know an, another nice thing you can do is think about how you know obviously giving to giving to a charity shop is a really lovely thing to do um but there there are other there's lots of kind of specialist charities that have um that require specific types of things and then you kind of you can potentially then get a bit more a bit more feedback about where that thing's gone so last I think last year or maybe the year before we donated um we donated a few tents to a charity who collect tents for um refugees um and so a lady came to our house to pick them up my partner dealt with that so I think she came to the house um and you know they spoke a little bit about it and that just kind of has Mm -hmm. that felt so nice to be like yeah. I'm so glad that these have gone to a really worthy cause and we didn't need like three tents or whatever we had and if we do ever need another tent we can buy one that's fine um yeah there's it, there's studies that show that it's by giving to others it actually is far more rewarding for our brains than giving to ourselves so I think that's another really important thing to bear into mind that kind of feel good factor of knowing that someone else is is going to potentially kind of get a lot more benefit from from this item than you are from keeping it so uh Kazi one has also just asked um what is the name of your website so that she can get on and buy the book oh fab yeah yeah so it's just my name so it's um it's just joanna thornhill.co.uk um and then from from there you can find there's sort of a drop down for the books um so if you if you go to if you go to the books page and then head to the new mindful home there is a, a link on that page that will take you through and you, and you can order it and it's all I've got like a little sort of shop on the, on the website I literally only sell these but <laughs> yeah there's kind of a little shop set up so you can just sort of work work your way through there and then there's um spe- when you go to order there's a spot in the you can add in a comment saying what what subscript um yeah subscription I don't think that's quite the right word but yeah what what you would like me to sign right in it if you would like a message as well otherwise I just send them with a signature okay brilliant so thank you for everybody has, that has sent in the message and um, who's joined the live um, I hope you um, have found it really insightful and um, obviously go and check out Joanna's website um, if you've got any more queries uh, we will be adding the live uh, to our IGTV so if any of you have just joined and you've missed all of it um, you can catch up at a later date um, so thank you very much for joining us Joanna um, I hope you've had a great um, 40 minutes maybe <laughs> not sure how long we've been talking um it's been really insightful and um we've got a lot of knowledge from you so thank you very much for joining us um, yeah very much for having me yeah and um thank you to our followers once again so it's time to say goodbye so um see you later <laughs> thank you very much bye bye